Hi, hi, Crystal here. Welcome to another episode with the Interactive Immersive HQ and joining us in our Artist Inspired series. In this video, I'll cover Carlos Cruz Diaz. He is a French Venezuelan artist that really was a big figure in a 20th century artist realm of color scene. And he was big on kinetic and optimal art. And I was very inspired by these kind of slit screen colored geometric shape artwork and it just looks like it has movement so I thought this would be fun to make it generative and I did a little thing a touch designer that will teach you how to do <laughs> and this is what I got I did the liberty of having a 1080 by 1080 square format and there's different shapes that you can switch between so circle triangle and a rectangle but you can the rectangle kind of soften the edges but for all of them you can kind of play with softening the edges Ooh, maybe a little bit less soft for this one and it's very flexible where you can change whatever color scheme you want and it's pretty simple doing a lot of compositing and gradients in and, and and it also has the option to be animated. And I will show you demo the animation, but I just want to do a disclaimer. If you are sensitive to strobing or seizures, you should pause this video and skip forward till I stop demoing the animation because um, it can be kind of intense with all the stripes and the colors. <laughs> and paused okay so you can have a speed chop that kind of affect the animation and have it change the stripes and also the rotation and this is set pretty low and you can have it go faster and slow it down if you have any type of parameters um, data that you can have this control this be, but just be warned not to go too big of a number. So you see these are pretty low, like 0 0.02, 0 0.01. So you don't want to freak someone out <laughs> or freak yourself out. And I'll turn this off. And yeah, so this is what I got. And we're going to build this together. And I'll see you with a clean network. So we'll start with making the stripe textures. And if you have watched my Bridget Riley, generative Bridget Riley tutorial, this technique may be uh, familiar. So we'll start with the rectangle top. I'll first change the resolution to 1080 by 1080 because I want a square. And for the size of the rectangle, I'll have it to be 0.5 and one. So, uh, Tall rectangle, great. And I'll do a transform. And this transform top in the tile tab, I'll change it to repeat, so then it can repeat as many as I want. And I will play with the scale to be 0.012. So now you see a bunch of stripes. And I'll kind of play with the rotation, and this is um, very much your freedom of choosing whatever rotation you want, but I'll just do like a two, negative 220. Awesome. I'm gonna copy this and make another transform. And this one, I'll just have a different rotation. So I'll do like something like mm, negative 330. Cool. And it's kind of hard to tell until like you zoom in what is happening. Great, great. So after that, let's make the shapes. I'll start with a circle. And again, resolution, I'll change to 1080 by 1080. Now we want a open circle, like as if it's a donut. So I will change this fill alpha to zero. And it's like, what's gives? Why is it all gone? It's because we don't have a border. So this border width, I'll change it to be um, something like, Two. So now you see this black border. And instead of this black, I'll have it to be white. But now you're not going to see anything. Oh, here. This border color here. Have it white. Now you don't see the border because it's the same color as the fill. So this fill alpha 
I have zero. Great, beautiful. And <laughs> then I will also play with the center because I'm gonna have two circles. And if it's two, two of them, it's gonna stack over each other if I flip it. So I'll move it a little bit and I'll have it move by negative 0.1, just, just a tiny bit. Well, and the resolu um, the radius, I'll make it slightly smaller. So 0.35 by 0.35, great. And I'll copy and paste this and I'll make this triangle. And the triangle one for this polygon parameter, I'll turn it on and I'll move the size to be, um, I'll make the border width 2.3 and then the radius to be 0.4, 4 or 5, <laughs> 4 or 5, so a bit bigger, great. And the final shape I'll have is a rectangle. And for the rectangle, I actually want, uh, I don't want to be a square, so I'll make this 0 0.5 to 0.6. And rather than having it so perfectly straight, I'll do a little bit of rotation. I'll just do like a 16 rotation. In the center, I'll change it to point, negative 0 0.12 and negative 0.5. So, then it will not be complete next to each other, but a little bit staggered. And I forgot resolution, change to 1080 by 1080. Great. So I'm gonna move this a little bit higher. So let's do negative 0.13. Great. <laughs> and I want to soften it a bit. So I'll soften it to be um, 0 0.05, pretty soft. You can, you can adjust it to the way you want. And the circle too, if you want to soften it a little bit, it's your network, do what you want. <laughs> and then we'll add a switch top. I'll just select all of these and hook it, pipe it into the switch. And then, so now you can switch between zero, one, two for which shape you want. Great, great. So we have our slit, we have our, our texture, we have our shape, and let's make the gradient. So I'll add a ramp. In this ramp, rather than type of horizontal, I would want it vertical. And let's make also the resolution same 1080 by 1080. And you can choose any color scheme palette you want but I will do this blue to kind of magenta-ish thing. I'm gonna play with the phase a bit. Boop, boop. Yeah. And I think I'm vibing with this, yeah, yeah. So now we're gonna composite this texture onto this shape, but with this color. So we'll do a handy dandy composite top. And I'll just choose one of the transforms. I'll choose the first one, second. So now you see the texture on it. And then let's add some color on it. Ooh, got our first shape. Wonderful. <laughs> and now let's play with having a, another uh, actually, let's let's start with the background. Um, so this will be this will be for the sh shape, and this will be for the background. So let's actually, so we won't get confused. Let's do um, shape text, and this will I'll call it to be key text for background texture. So. Rather than, you can just make another ramp, but what I will do instead is do a HSD adjust and pipe this to the ramp. And you can play around with shifting this HSD adjust. And you can play with the hue offset. So I'm gonna do like something like this, maybe. Can you can play more with you want to do some like 
saturation multiplier thing or um, maybe like a, yeah, I think mostly I would just suggest like playing with the hue offset section, but I'll just, um, I'll do, I'll first put it for negative 39 and I'll see what we'll, 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 we'll adjust it. We'll, we'll adjust the HSV adjust <laughs> and um, I'll do a multiply top we can do a comp too but since we're gonna just pipe two things rather multiple things I'll just do a, a multiply uh, comp since I know that uh, multiply top because I know that's gonna just be the one uh, type of composite we're gonna use and I will put the background text and the HSV adjust great and now we have this one shape and I want another duplicate of the shape. So rather than making another shape, we can just make a variation of the shape by doing a flip. The flip, I'll put it here and I'll turn on the flip X and flip Y. So it's on the other side and upside down. And for this, I'll add another HSV adjust. And for this HSV adjust, you can again play, play what you want to do with it. Um, can adjust the uh, offset to something. And I'm gonna re retouch all of these, but um, just so you can have an idea. So we'll, you can put the HSV adjust over here, and we're gonna comp this, this, and this all together. So we'll do a composite top. I'm gonna set this to over. Now pipe one, two, and three. Oh, actually, not too bad. Let me add a null. I'll call this out, and I have this in the background so we can see what's going on. So you see, you can see the background grid because it is transparent. So we can add a transform. We'll turn on, um, and we can change this color to something else. Let's play with yellow. I feel like this is gonna be a bad idea. And, and then turn on this comp over background. Okay, like let's, let's not vibe in with this. Ooh, blue kind of works. Freedom, freedom, choose, choose whatever. You actually, this to start green is kind of nice. Cool. And again, you can play with the different just be it jazz. I kind of like this red ish more. But I find something that works with you. And I want to add a little bit grain texture on it. So if you watch my Past videos, I do this quite often where I add a noise, change the type to random, and the common page, page resolution, 1080 by 1080. And let's make this lighter with the level, post, opacity, 0.1, too small, 0.2, see? And we'll add a add. And pipe this to the transform and back to out. So this is with the texture and this is without the texture. Maybe it's a little bit too much, so I can make it to 0.1. Ooh, I'm vibing with this. Cool. Can stop here. Can maybe play with um, the center location a little bit. So if you want to have it a little bit stacking, maybe a center to like negative 108. Play around with the different shape variations. But if you want to continue, we can make it animate a bit. So I in the chop land, I will do a constant. So uh. So, keep saying so. Uh, you can also just in the transform do abs time 
snaps, tie that frame and make this very low. So I think it was like 0 0.001 and have it animate this way. But lately I've been liking to do this, the speed chop method because then I'm able to slide and change the speed uh, because once you have to manually put this in to do it. Ooh, too much. So you can feel free to do that or you can add a constant and I'll call this a speed and I'll add a speed chop. So if I have this to be at like 0 0.01, then it starts counting up. And I'll just add a null. I'll call this bar for parameters. And I'll pipe this into the TX. I'm gonna just copy and paste this into this TX, but since I don't want it to be all the same, I'm actually gonna add a negative in front of it so it's gonna to go to a different direction. Again, you can stop here, but I want to also add some rotation on the physical shape, so I'll add a transform on behind the shape. And I will paste this into the rotation but I'm going to actually by times it by 10. Yeah, so it's a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll copy and paste this and do the same for the other rectangle. Great. Then if you slide the constant, but please slide maybe in a measurement of 0 0.001. You can make it stop or increase it quite a lot. This is where the, ro the, the warning of the strobing <laughs> comes in. <laughs> I'm gonna move it back to 0 0.01. That's a good speed. And yeah, you can do different shapes play with the softness, and really make it your own. I'm gonna turn off the speed chop so it's not moving. And there you go, that's the tutorial. I, again, make it your own, play with different shapes. Don't you know, even have to use these shapes, you can even put in an image and see what you can get out of it, um, different color schemes, and if you, make something that you're very proud of and you want to share on your social, feel free to tag the Interactive Immersive HQ and myself. I'll leave my handle in the comments um, in the caption below. And if you have any requests, feel free to put in the comments. And till next time, have fun. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.